I've just become a vegetarian. <laughs> Welcome to Ladies' Night. Um, and our next guest is Shirley Brewer. She is a poet, an educator, and a workshop facilitator. She served as VP of Maryland Writers Association, Vault Be More chapter last year. Shirley is widely published, including in the Courtland Review, Innisfree Poetry Journal, Pearl, Comstock Review, and others. She was recently awarded an honorable mention in Passenger's 2013 National Poetry Contest, and her new book, Afterwards, was published this year by Apprentice House at Loyola University. We're very glad to have her for the second time, Shirley Brewer. It's nice to have a man introduce you on ladies' night. I did want to announce also that I just found out yesterday I'm going to be poet in residence at Carver School for the Arts in Baltimore County starting in the last week of August. So, thank you about that. You know what, John? Can you? Uh, I need to put this in here because I don't want to see the demo. How do you do that? He doesn't know me. <laughs> My experience with technology. Today, uh, July 27th, would be, should be the uh, birthday celebration of a young man named Stephen Bradley Pitcairn. Today would have been his 27th birthday. Uh, Stephen was murdered in Charles Village on the night of July 25th, 2010. Uh, many of you may remember the story. He was walking home that night from Penn Station after spending the weekend with his sisters in New York City. He was talking to his mom on his cell phone uh, when he was attacked, so she essentially heard his murder over the phone. And um, he wanted to become a doctor. That was his goal in life, and he never had that opportunity. So uh, I'd asked John, I did read from uh, my book before it actually became a book last August, but I wanted to come back uh, tonight uh, so that we can all, as a group of us, celebrate the life of this young man on what would have been his 27th birthday. So how I got involved was I live on the 2700 block of St. Paul, a block from where Stephen was killed. And when I heard about the murder, I actually wrote a poem to the family expressing the grief of our community. And Stephen's mother wrote back to me and it began a correspondence that continues to this day. I just heard from Gwen Pitcairn on Wednesday. She sent me an email saying that the last few weeks have felt to her like the first few days after her son's uh, murder. So I wanted to read a, uh, one of the epigraphs that's in my book. Uh, it's by Charles Wright from his homage to Paul Cezanne. Remember me, speak my name, when the moon tugs at my sleeve, when the body of water is raised and becomes the body of light. Remember me, speak my name. This is from an email that Stephen sent to his mother. Mom, I want to give a lot and at the end to have left some small mark that people will remember. It's all about remembering today. This is the first poem I wrote in the voice of Stephen. Slain, one month after my murder. I miss small joys, oysters on the half shell, a good joke. I want years to explore all the stops on my personal map. Give me the chance to celebrate my 24th birthday. Is it too much to ask for one piece of chocolate cake? I grieve for my parents, my sisters, my coworkers, my friends, the light they lost when I died. My mother heard my final cries over the phone, mom, the last word I spoke. I need time for embraces, hugs, 
a long exuberant farewell. I forgive the pair who gouged my heart. Make them understand what they did. Thank you, kind stranger who held me in the street. I did not know your name. I could barely move my lips. Blood flowed from my wound, soaking both of us. I felt your comfort, your voice calm, my final breath. Goodbye, dear ones, I'll be off now, the youngest doctor in the angel crowd. They gave me an instant medical degree. Look for me in the gallant green-garbed full moon, my grin an oasis in the night sky. In quiet moments, listen to nature, birds, cicadas, a butterfly wing. In their music, my heart still beats. I wanted to mention, for those of you who don't know the story, because I didn't write the first poem tonight, but Reggie Higgins uh, was my neighbor on St. Paul Street. I say was, because he has since moved to North Carolina, back to his home state. But the night of the murder, Reggie heard a commotion, and he came out of his house, called 911. He saw Stephen in the street, and he lifted him. He held him. Uh, the ambulance got there too late, and, and Stephen died in Reggie's arms. So um, that's, I'll be reading a poem in a minute in Reggie's voice. Um, the next poem I'll share is the poem I wrote in the voice of Gwen Pitcairn, Stephen's mother. Uh, Gwen had shared a lot of uh, intimate details with me about her son and her feelings. And I say intimate because I didn't know her. And so, um, but you know, with poetry establishes a bond between people. And once I sent the first poem, then um, there was just a bond that was established between us. And so I wrote this poem in her voice. My mother speaks. Uh, three months after my murder. Sun, unbearable star, illuminates the sky. Another crushing day without you on this earth. Blue mornings blur my vision, conjure your lost eyes. The knife severed two hearts, left mine, a wounded sparrow shuddering inside me. When sleep will not come, I call your dead phone, your voice in absence, my ears grieve. The silence keeps getting louder and louder. My path broken, your departure so abrupt, the steps of your journey alive in my mind. My beautiful boy, you leaped into this world, became a man, your gifts a salve, a healing force. That last night you spoke with passion about your research, a chance to serve. When you ran into evil, it could not stand your bliss. Stephen, send me a light, a portion of moon, something I can embrace, a way to touch you, son. Each time I breathe, my chest feels the blade. In terms of research, Stephen was working on breast cancer research at Hopkins. He was only 23. He's working uh, with doctors who had far more experience than he. Um, the good news is that he worked on a medical paper, and if now I didn't know anything about medical papers, but they apparently they take a long time to write. But this year, there'll be a paper that will come out, uh, I'm not sure where, in some medical journal, but it will have on it the name of Stephen Pitcairn, because his team, uh, is continued working on that paper and they have incorporated his part of the research and so he'll have his name on a paper, medical paper. Um, I spoke with Reggie the other day, he called me on the anniversary of the murder on Thursday. We still keep in close touch. It was interesting when Reggie made the decision to move back to North Carolina, uh, what he said to me was, surely I'm six feet tall and I'm a black man in Baltimore, but I'm scared. He just couldn't deal with what he had seen that night and he just went back to, he's very happy, went back to the state where he was from. Uh, Reggie Higgins speaks, this is dated Christmas Day 2010, which would have been uh, Reggie's birthday. In the heart of winter, people swarm to the malls, search for presents, while I relive the night my life changed. An ordinary Sunday in July, the moon a brilliant pearl in the Baltimore sky. I heard a loud cry, an anguished scream, sounds so raw they resonate in my sleep. 
I ran outside, the street lamp dark. A young man lay by the curb, a hole in his chest. A rush of blood, I could not stop. I held him as if he were my own, never mind the different shades of our skin. Both of us red in the moonlight. I cradled his head. He called out mom before dying in my arms. I did not know Stephen Pitcairn until his last moments on earth. If I can believe my presence soothed him on his journey, then I received the best gift. I held him in the summer night. No one should die alone. Um, and then I think I'll just read. Do I have time for two more poems? I, think two more. Um, I wrote a poem in, in the voice of the moon. That night there was a full moon. Stephen was killed beneath a tree. And since I was going to write about the moon and the tree, I decided the knife needed to speak, the murder weapon. So this is moon tree knife. Moon. I was full that night, my favorite phase. Stephen looked up at me, a beacon to guide him home. My gold surface a blessing, what I offered was not enough. When he fell, my light revealed his blood, Stephen gazed skyward, struggled for breath, saw my perfect face. I hope I gave him one last burst of joy. Tree. In summer, my foliage provides a respite from heat, the sun's fervor. I am a sanctuary of nature in the city. That night, my roots trembled when two people killed a boy, my shadows hiding their brutal attack. He died beneath my branches, I could do nothing. I wanted to embrace Stephen and the neighbor who held him, wrap them both in my healing green. Knife. My blade ended Stephen's life. It was not my choice. Men created me for good deeds, slicing apples, whittling an animal from a piece of wood. At the trial, lawyer, lawyers held me aloft. I felt the loathing in everyone's eyes. The killers who used me that night expressed no remorse. Dear family whose lives I slashed, forgive me for the loss of your beautiful boy. Uh, and I'll cl close with um, uh, the poem I wrote two years after my murder, which as I mentioned at the reading the other night, it could be three years after my murder. The, the, Regardless of the title, it, it works. So this is two years after my murder, July 25th, 2012. When death is fresh, everyone pays attention. A face in the news, flowers at the murder site, grief a sound that blocks out the sun. Months pass, the moon returns to fullness, the faucet of sorrow once a force slows. Family and friends camouflage their pain, suffer in the dark silence of memories. A knife stopped my heart on a summer night. I can't forget that knife, a weapon trumps a dream. Who will trust the voices of the dead? This strange language may not be heard. My journey from I am to I was, too abrupt. My blood mixing with the litter of the street I felt the knife go in, I was scared. The energy of last moments is a story unwritten. Time is fleeting, color lasts forever. I live on in blue, a doctor of sky. Thank you.